Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first ever In Times Like These recap. If you're watching this, you either want to catch up on this series as quick as possible, or you just want to relive the wild moments that you witnessed. Either way, you are welcome here. Now let's get into this. 20 years ago, Elvira Russo lost her life in her family estate. Unfortunately, her nephew Ben found her. Since finding your aunt on the floor is traumatizing, especially for a five-year-old, life was not easy for Ben growing up. I'll get back to Ben and his childhood trauma later. 20 years later, which is present day, the Dorval family, headed by Haitian immigrant Raymond Dorval, moved to Valley Park since his son Jeremiah has been finding great success with his HVAC company. Jeremiah is joined by his wife Shelly and their two kids, JJ and Vanessa who don't really find moving to Valley Park to be a huge success. Let me start with Vanessa. She's the older sibling and she befriends Ulyssa Torres, but Ulyssa's sister Nichelle isn't feeling Vanessa at all. Let me be blunt, Nichelle doesn't like Vanessa one bit. Do you know who does like Vanessa though? Max Russo, who is Ben Russo's younger brother. Max tries to shoot his shot but Vanessa blocks it because the two aren't equally yoked. As for Max, he asks what eggs have to do with anything. Vanessa explains to him time and time again that she is a born again Christian, faith based salvation, and she has no interest in being with Max who is a Catholic, which Vanessa explains is a religious institution based on salvation through works. Despite Vanessa being hard to get, Max doesn't seem to be getting the message and is willing to accept the challenge. As for JJ, he is having his own issues of hearing sounds of laughter that no one else can hear and these sounds of laughter don't exist, but he doesn't know that because he hears them clear as day since these sounds of laughter is plaguing his mind. JJ is oblivious to the fact that his new friend Keith has a thing for Vanessa as well, but Keith has some concerning tendencies about his quote-unquote infatuations with Vanessa. Let's get off of the creepy part and let's jump to the newfound friends of the Dorval family, which are the Torres family. Devante is the head of the family and he runs the biggest business in Valley Park, Florida, which is Theodosius' palace. Since he and his wife Isabel are Dominican, he jokes with Jeremiah about them being enemies. But why would you say something like that to someone you don't even know? The Dorval family decided to put that distasteful joke to the side and made the choice to go into business with Devante. Business might be booming for Devante, but his family life isn't really booming. In fact, it's torn since his oldest son is nowhere to be seen, not even a picture is shown, and said deuces to Valley Park for some odd, mysterious reason that might or might not be revealed in the future. At least Devante and Isabel have two other kids who are still in town. Nichelle meets Zeke Franklin, who's the younger brother of Quinlan, who I'll discuss later on in the video. Zeke explains to Nichelle that Quinlan's name ain't even Quinlan. Their mama just named her Quinn. The thing is that Zeke and Quinlan's mama ain't in the picture either for some odd, mysterious reason that might or might not be revealed in the future. Nichelle can't seem to keep her mind and even her eyes off of Zeke. Ulyssa notices this, reminding her older sister that she doesn't even know Zeke. The problem is that Nichelle tells her sister how she's tripping and that Zeke's not such a bad guy. Except Zeke is a drug dealer. He's the plug. He's a pusher. Nichelle doesn't know this, but she believes that Zeke has a good personality and he seems to like her too. Before I discuss Elvira's family, I gotta discuss her relationships before her life was violently taken away from her. Back in the day, Elvira dated Udell Mitchell, but something happened in their relationship where Udell was done with her and ended up with Elvira's best friend Wanda after Elvira passed on. 
even after 20 years where Udell is now the CEO of his family's law firm and Wanda is the CEO of the company she founded, Confidence Designs, they have a teenage daughter named Yvette who has a reputation of sleeping around and not for slumber parties. And Wanda feels like the Russo family are still bitter at her for marrying Udell when Elvira had him first. Udell tries to tell Wanda how she's stressing over nothing, and she eventually, really reluctantly, admits that she is stressing over nothing. But she's got something else to stress about since someone made this realistic AI image of her posing provocatively, like she's Lil Kim and has no respect for herself. Yet Wanda does respect herself, feels like this fake photo has tarnished her company and is ready to make whoever created that disgusting photo of her pay. Heidi Russo married into the Russo family, who are owners of a jewelry company. Heidi gave her husband Gianni two sons, who I've mentioned, Ben and Max. Not only do you have a son who wants nothing to do with you or the family, but you have a husband who's angry at his brother Esidor, who once dated Isabel Torres, but Devante prides himself in the fact that he swept Isabel off of her feet and rubs it in whenever he gets a chance, which Isabel dislikes. Now, Esidor stole Gianni's idea of creating a nursing scholarship in their dead sister's name because Gianni's nephew, Alan, hears about this idea and tells his father, Esidor, to take it because it would gain favor with Gianni and Esidor's grief-stricken parents, Lorenzo and Clarice. Esidor and Dr. Terry Burke, who is the chief of staff at Valley Park Memorial Hospital, announced their quote-unquote plans to make a scholarship in Alvarez's name, but Gianni tells Esidor, you scumbag, that was my idea. Except Esidor's like, I don't care. It's my idea now. Now Heidi has to deal with her husband's nagging about how bitter he is about what Esidor did and that he wants to make him pay. Yet Gianni is upset at Heidi for not being present when Esidor and Terry announced that they stole his idea. The reason why Heidi wasn't present was because she was met by Terry's husband, the police commissioner Finnegan, who, before Finnegan was married to Terry, had an affair with Heidi 20 years ago while she was still married to Gianni. Now Finnegan is feeling nostalgic, wanting to do the nasty with Heidi again. Heidi is adamant that she's not a nasty girl anymore. After 20 years, she had another son, she's district attorney, and she's trying to make her marriage work with her husband. Despite all of that, Finnegan kisses Heidi making it hard for Heidi to get the kiss off of her mind. She confronts Finnegan, who believes that Heidi came back for more than a kiss, and tells him that she is not a nasty girl anymore. The problem is that Finnegan, who is still a nasty boy, tells Heidi that he'll be waiting for her whenever she feels like a nasty girl again. Heidi has, I'm sorry, had a sister-in-law named Elvira, the younger sister of Gianni and Esidor. Elvira was mentioned earlier in this recap. Her nephew Ben was five years old at the time when he found her. 20 years had passed by and those 20 years were filled with sadness, bitterness, confusion, so many emotions all wrapped in one. Because his family can be toxic, he decided to skip the picnic honoring Elvira's birthday but his grandmother Clarice kindly pleaded with him to just stop by because of his love for his aunt. While Ben is at the picnic, he's approached by Zeke's older sister Quinlan, who's a reporter for Global News Press. She's producing a documentary on Elvira's case and would like to get Ben's perspective on it since he's a private investigator and all. At first, he's like, screw the media. But walking around the picnic, he notices tension between those who crossed paths with Elvira 20 years ago. He was too far to hear the secrets and bent up anger that was spilled, even though we still don't know what secret Terry and Esidor are keeping. Supposedly, Terry committed a crime against his family, which he's holding over her head. 
Because of these interactions, Ben decides that maybe he should look into Elvira's case and work with Quinlan to finally figure out who took his aunt's life. Since Ben is a private investigator, he keeps things neat and nice, like creating a list as to who could lead him to the person who hurt Elvira. Could it have been his mother Heidi, his uncle Gianni, Terry, Finnegan, Udell, or Wanda? Ben knows that he's gotta take his time and decides to look into Finnegan Burke first since Finnegan was assigned to the case. Quinlan is like, I got you. But she fails to tell Ben that she's also a nasty girl and that his father is a nasty boy because she and Ben's father Gianni are committing adultery, confirming that the Russo family is a screwed up bunch. Did that all make sense to you? If it did, fantastic. If not, then catch up yourself if you think I don't know how to fill you in on any stories. But you can come back. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. You're not ready for what's to come, but tune in anyway.